Okay, so we've had two videos in this series now. We looked initially at how to convert from MP4 into a usable container or format for DVD. Then last was a little bit longer, the part two, when we talked about how to do menus and how to the subtitles in. This will be the longest one today. We're going to actually talk about how do you create the closed captions and how do you get them into the DVD video. Once you've got the properly synchronized subtitles, so here they are right here, you bring those in and then I'm going to export them in scenarioist format. So I'm going to do a, a save as and that's what you want, scenarios closed captions. And I would save them, I've already done that. Uh, and that's all we need that for. This is an important point. Uh, now would be a good time to explain the difference. A subtitle is actually, it's actually generated by your video player. And whether that's on your Macintosh, your PC, something else, it's, it's the player that generates those subtitles based on the, um, the subtitles being muxed in there. With the closed captions, it's actually your video player. It's a more of a hardwired kind of thing. Uh, and closed captions are used by things like DVD players, but also uh, if you have video prompters and that kind of thing, they'll also read that closed caption format. And you can do a lot more things with closed captions than you can with subtitles in actuality. There's a lot of different formats. There's a lot more colors, etc. But what I want to do now is show you how to find the appropriate IFO, which is more or less the uh, index file for your DVD portions. Uh, and here's how you, if you go into the DVD itself and you open up the video TS section, and you look at it, there's the main movie is very likely to consist of several VOBs files, but they're all going to start off with the same number, the same two digit number. So in this case, 010. Now, you can have a, you can have a DVD with, you know, up to 99 of these things, and the main movie has almost always going to be the one that's got these large quantities. And notice they're they're in two, uh, they're, well, they're in one gigabit um, chunks, or uh, two billion byte chunks is what I was trying to say earlier. Uh, you you want to know that because you want to figure out which of the IFOs you're going to grab that you're going to demux. In this particular case, we're going to grab VTS01, and that's set up here. You just get that the browse button. I've already set up a folder called uh, DMUX where this, uh, this DMUX is going to take place. Now a couple things. First thing is make sure you click on DMUX video stream. Uh, PGC DMUX defaults with this off uh, and because it takes longer if you do the video stream that's why. Uh, create cell times that's going to be important later so make sure you click that and then you do process and this is lightning fast this thing will be done in uh, in moments so let me show you what the results uh, look like from that from that DMUX so what it came out with on the other end is the video file in M2V which is just elementary stream format uh, it's got two sets of sub pictures and what these are is a series of um, of images that get flashed across the screen. They're really hardwired in there. This just tells you uh, what took place and how long it took. These, these are a list of chapters and then this is the audio. Now, you could have multiple sets of sub pictures if you have multiple sets of subtitles. You could have multiple audio files. So again, you, you can have all those things. So now you've got that DMUX. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put the closed captions into the, the file. So the first thing you want to do is you want to come to Captioneer and you want to go Import Captions. Um, so I wanted to save changes. No, in this particular case because I'm just demonstrating it. So for Captions, we're going to go back here 
and we're going to look at the closed captions we had and remember that uh, the ones oh, so the ones we've got are the subbed or the synced subs in scenarios format we bring those in and if we wanted to we could also put a movie in there and make sure that they lined up this is another place that you can move things around um, in our particular case I already know they're lined up so we can go right here and come to multiplex into the stream and so now uh, we're gonna pick the stream that we're multiplexing it into will be that one and then it tells us where do we want to put the finished version of it and surprise surprise I already done this so I click on that save and this runs for about a two hour movie four to five minutes so this is also super fast uh, there is also a I will mention a command line way to do this there's the uh, CC box and CC ASDI command line tools to do that but those things will take 10 12 hours and this captioneer version uh, is uh, is absolutely amazing uh, and that's the that is the place you can go pick this up but this is an incredible tool I mean it just makes things so much simpler so now we've got that in there uh, and we've got the muxed version and now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the we're going to take uh, Muxman and we're going to uh, reassemble our video. So in this particular case, what we've done is we've got that elementary stream file. And you just get there by clicking there. I've got my audio file, which I've set as English. And then the one, uh, two nuances. One is the subtitle streams. So I subtitle stream one that 2 English that's uh, pan and scan and then the second version 21 which again was from the same place was letterbox and wide and I'll show you where those were here and you just click on them it's very straightforward um, and then one remember I said for a double-sided disk for a double-sided disk I talked about in the earlier one we want to go in and import those chapters and that would be those cell times so that's actually very very important to do because if you do the double-sided disk otherwise it's not going to know where to do the divide and if you use a really good program like we're going to use image burn uh, it, it'll work okay but um, you, why why leave that to chance so and then I've got this going into VOBS with closed captions and you click start and this again is relatively fast four or five minutes for a two-hour movie pretty pretty incredible and I shall show you what that looks like. So here we are in the VOBS with closed captions. I just wanted to show you what the result end looks like. So this is uh, that um, closed caption including M2V. And this is the video TS that's created. And it has got uh, all these in there. Now, um, when we come back to this in the next video, we're only going to use this portion of it, this upfront piece for the whole DVD we're not going to use, but that's where it ends. Okay, so I had a question from a, a watcher, uh, one of the subscribers to the channel, about how I could tell whether or not there were actually closed captions already in a file so I'm gonna show you here just a quick demo so this was the original DMUX version uh, and notice that it says that it's a letterbox and it's got nothing up here um, if I take that off and if I add in the VOBS with the closed captions so here we go with the closed captions Notice now that it shows that it has a uh, closed captions in field one. Another comment I got from a, a watcher is a follower is that uh, they did it and it's still the closed captions didn't work on their system and uh, there were some questions about my parentage and other things. 
what you need to do sometimes is, and I use this IFO edit uh, 0.971, is you have to go back in to the, uh, the actual menu itself. In this particular case, it's, uh, it's the VTS, uh, it's the, I'm sorry, it's the IFO 01. Pick the one that has the movie in it. It's got all these different things specified. And you got to make sure that you click on the field one in GOP, which is where the closed captions are, because it doesn't always do that. And then you click save, and it will it will ensure that it flips the byte that lets the reader know that it's there. So anyway, that's a that's a relatively simple thing to do. Again, IFO edit. You just go to open, and you pick the particular. Uh, VTS IFO that you're looking at, you open it up, you go to the uh, the video one, you click the field, you click OK, and you click Save, and that's that. So, um, and there you go. And so ends that video. Uh, next video we'll be looking at actually how do you reassemble the DVD into a finished form.